Hey everyone, it's Char from Char's Fashion Nation, and as you know from earlier, if you watched that video, I know someone did, um, it was filmed, right? So I'm kind of excited to get back into just teach you how to paint something, and I showed you that little canvas earlier, and that's exactly what I will be using no big deal so I actually have my paint rig right here yeah that thing's disgusting but it's my paint rig <laughs> and I do happen to have some other paint brushes right here paint brushes do get stained if not cleaned properly and also depending on the hairs we will go into that on another video so do I want to use this big brush on there? Probably not. And this is when we look at the brushes that I already have out or I go over there and look. But I do have a bunch of brushes near me. Now brushes I was using yesterday were these two. And that's it. That's all I was using. And um, I can actually continue just to use those. So uh, let's get into that. What I will start with is up here. First, let me get that brush wet. And that's one thing I will tell you. Go ahead and get your brush wet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some black and some of that blue right there. You know, you're like, oh my gosh, you're going into a dark color. Now, there's a reason why I'm doing that to blend some color because once you get into doing this, you have to learn how to blend from your lights to your darks. And you're like, well, why didn't you do a Bob Ross and start in the center and work your way out? Because I want to have those two colors blended and ready to go after I take that yellow to the center. So clean your brush really good we don't have to beat the devil out of it yet um, and then pick up some of that yellow um, seems to be that there was some green in there that wants to mix with this yellow I don't know I don't know Just always find a I gotta get a new palette um, I mean, you can start in a circle, but you basically want to go like this, and then work your way out. And since there's watercolor on here, yes, it will pick up. Just so you guys know that that will pick up. Hey, Brandy Ray, I hope you're watching this. And if it gets too dark in here, I'll just turn on the light. Yay, because that works. I had the light on and then I turned it off thinking, do I really want the light on? <laughs> Alexa is not giving the correct weather. Like, oh, it's supposed to be mostly sunny today and a few clouds. Oh, there's a lot of clouds out there. Okay, what do I want to take next? Oh, what I do want to do next is actually blend that color and you can just take the same brush as long as you've dried it already cleaned and dried it and you just take it because you want to take that and just blend it now it'd be the same as me taking a bigger brush and working this on a bigger canvas be the same exact thing go ahead and dry your brush again and you now have other colors on here to work with and you might think it's a bit odd to work with something kind of fleshy it is a bit odd and i agree with that but that's also a way to also tone down your yellow You're like what yes it's a way to actually tone it and brighten it and a lot of people don't think about that now the reason you want to brighten it right here is that's the center and then we will go back in and just 
clean your brush by wiping it on there and then just take it and crisscross stroke them just like that go ahead and clean your brush now I just have bottled water in some cups right there and as we go out in this we'll bring a little more of this blue right here and now I do have some silver metallic on here so we'll take a little bit of that silver metallic into that blue just to lighten it up and just a smidge and I have the dark blue here and if you can see here it actually lightened it up so I'm working with what I have till I can replace that white then I'll have more Just take this across here. Don't even worry about this because we are going to come back in. Just like wherever your blue was in the first place. Just go in and work that there. That's why we have paint on both sides of the brush. Just try not to really get it into that yellow because then you're going to end up with a green sky. Well, that's not so pretty. So let's clean the brush again. And we're going to come back up in here with a little bit of that silver on the brush. Just a little bit of that silver. And we're going to take that back in with the blue. And this time again, with those little X strokes in the paint. And again, try not to catch that yellow. And work that in there. And you're going to get a much lighter sky base. And do the, just do that as you go along. Ooh, picked up a chunk there. Well, that'll be enough to take this along now, won't it? <laughs> yes, it will. And I've actually been drawing since I was two years old. I started getting into, like, you know, kids paint when they're in primary school, you know, preschool, whatever you, you call it, wherever you are. And uh, I didn't paint like the other kids. If they said, oh, paint a picture of this, uh, mine came out a little more realistic than it should have. I used to get in trouble for that. You make the other kids look bad now. Sorry, it wasn't me. Uh, you made their self look that way. It wasn't my fault. the same thing with, with my science experiment or science project. Hey, anybody remember doing science projects for school? Had to do something. I will just take this along. It's just the blue for the sky anyway. And this is acrylic so it's gonna basically dry about the same as the uh, as the uh, water paint basically now right here I do have my water I can technically change up this whole entire thing if I want to now I'm gonna go ahead and take some of that uh, crimson red this is not a permanent red this is a crimson red Bring that down and we're going to pick up a little bit of this purple right here. You thought I was going to go for silver. I'm actually going for purple. And that purple, again, like the silver, is actually going to change the tinge 
of that crimson. You can see that right there. It changes. Here's the crimson. Add a little bit of that right in there. Changes the tinge. And we're going to take this along right here because we have these little clouds. Okay. We have our own little clouds and we're just going to work them like this because, you know, we could do this. Okay. This is usually the puppy cloud thing. But we can also just go like this. Okay. Just work that in there. And I might have to change my lighting in here in a minute because that is starting to bother my eyes um, and make it harder for me to see the canvas. Now, when you don't have something dark back in your canvas, that does affect how light hits. It comes through and affects your view, your vision with your eyes to see what's actually going on. Now, I did almost buy a, a ring light yesterday and it was a pretty nice looking one but I didn't do it yep I'm just going to continue with the video obviously because you guys know I do not have the pause button on here and nor am I going to be able to restart the painting um or I would have to say something else. Da da da. I already got these sections done. And I really don't want to do that. I'd rather take take some time to teach you right. And that's important. Teaching these steps the correct way is important if you're going to teach something at all. And I saw um, a caption from a video from Kathy Hay. Now, I've been watching your videos. You are very talented. People have different talents. And that's the thing. Don't think that people aren't talented and that we don't have specific talents. I don't like to say that I have talent. Um, people tell me, oh, you're so talented. Well... You know, this is how I think of it. Everybody has a talent. You just have to bring out a talent in yourself that you're like, know you can do, you do it well, and you're very proud of that. And that is how you succeed. I'm just taking the purple up in there. Kind of like lighten those clouds a little bit. Maybe bring in a bit of that silver on it. lighten that up before I end up uh, brushing this and I may actually bring that fan brush back out for our dry brush and just use the edge of it just use the edge of it just use the edge of that that fan brush just always use the edge of a, a brush like this as long as it's flat if you're working on a smaller surface like this and use that to literally blend blend your colors and uh, I'm gonna dry that brush nope not beating the devil out of it and you know why I'd have to pound it on here and I don't have a bunch of stuff on the floor to cover so not happening in this video maybe another video now i also have a pink on here that right now just so reminds me of jeffree star because it's really bright even though i know he's going through a lot dude people appreciate you also work a little bit of that up in here um and it so makes a difference if you can see that and I'll bring you in in a minute to see this. If you can see that, just the brightness of this brings that out so nice. And then you'll go back and you'll work that in. 
just to soften your clouds a little. Like you get light from dark, dark from light, and this is what makes a piece work. And like Bob Ross always said, just when you thought you may have had an accident, it may have been a happy accident. He gave me a lot of inspiration as a kid when people would put down my artwork. And uh, Bob Ross always gave me inspiration to continue to do my work. Because I always thought back and I was like, what would that old dude say if I stopped painting? Would he, you know, like... Would he be sad if you were stopped painting? Absolutely, I'm sure he would. Um, I'm going to take this bronze tone in. And this will be one of our bases down here for the sand. And I did lighten it. But we'll, we'll lighten that even further. But I just want to show you something real quick before we go back up here. You can take this and just sweep it in. And you really want to give stuff more texture when you do that. You'll be giving it a lot of texture. So I'm taking this tone here, which looks like a flesh tone, and I'm blending it with that bronze tone so that, uh, and I could take a little bit of that brown in with it uh, just to give it a more sand textured color more of that light one in there and just mix these on your brush right here just mix it right there and a thick paint sticks to a thin paint and water paint is a thin paint also depends on which water paint you're actually using. Are you actually using the water paint that comes from a tube or are you using a dry water paint? Makes a difference. Makes a big difference. So, and you see how I brought that out. You don't have to press hard. Now if you press hard you're going to get more color and then you have to blend it out. Now if you go lighter you get a lighter color and I did press harder over here on purpose. That's also because I wanted to show you the complete difference in that. And we are going to have water coming up on this. Kind of reminds me of one of the beaches that uh, I was at while I was in Florida. It was nice to have a chance to actually go to Florida. Now if I would have been able to visit the area where Bob Ross grew up, I think I would have been more than happy. So <laughs> I think I would have been more than happy to maybe next time right so you know I had a little cloud here so let's work that cloud back in and we might actually go mixed medium in this painting but I just really want to show you how you can take these when somebody tells you no you're not supposed to be able to do that on a canvas don't believe them you know why because you've seen it You've seen it happen on a canvas. And uh, don't believe that you can't do something when somebody tells you no, you can't do that. My gosh, I was told that my artwork would never take me anywhere. Look where it took me. I'm on YouTube teaching it to you. Um, I was told that I would never amount to anything. 
And, uh, but yet yeah, here I am teaching you. Hola, mi amigo. Sorry, that was my friend. I think he was calling in here for me. And, um... Okay. <laughs> I think you also realize that uh, I'm back here teaching, so he'll he'll wait a few minutes until I'm, you know, done. He's just that way. That's a real friend will do that. Trust me. A real friend will be vigilant. So we're going to come down here to the water and I want to show you something before I bring you back up here. You're like, you're all over the place. Well, I do actually just want to show you, like, you're right here at the event horizon. Now, most people take it straight. Water is not straight at your event horizon because you're also creating waves. You are creating waves and why are we creating waves waves indicate motion and thus also indicates that when you have that you can actually see that um, that motion in it it's very key that you can see that motion in it. I've got to put more silver on here. If I can squish some out of the tube, I have to really have to go get some more paint. And then I'll take you up to this big wave because I want to show you something. Um, because as you can see, I pressed hard here for a reason, but I didn't press hard here. And I did that on purpose. And as we go along, I'll like actually press hard on one part, pull it back lighter and lighter. Just to show you that your wave will have motion on it right here. But at the same time, at the same time, you have this right here this is your one that curls back bring that back and pull it back okay i know we're gonna have some wavy action right up here on the beach soon wavy action going on it's right right here water's not perfect Dolls on the beach water is not perfect on the beach in fact, water is actually more transparent when it hits the land than a lot of people have realized. It's more transparent right here. And I'll put a few rocks out here in a little while. But I just wanted to get back into teaching you guys a little bit of art and a little bit of how you can take this together. Um, I love to teach illustration, so look forward to that soon um, on the channel. I'm taking a little flushy tone into this, and that'll also lighten it out. So as you come along here, and you're starting to pull those waves back out, because you know I'm just working with a smaller brush. Um, <laughs> I'm just used to, uh, you know working with what I have and there's nothing wrong with that you have a few of these little splashes coming up on to the beach and then it just kind of kind of works its way right along the beach 
You know what I mean? If you've ever been on the beach, or if you've ever been to a beach, a lot of you live around it, like Rocco from Roaming with Rocco. Lives in Florida now. Kind of miss my buddy. He may have to wait for me. I'm hurt. It was kind of hard when he moved away. I mean, even though I drove down with him, I had to fly back. But I didn't get to do my ending video of, like, saying goodbye to him. As he pulled away and I really wanted to do kind of a cool video of like saying bye to, to Rocco because I don't I really don't know if I'll get to see my best friend you know of so many years you know ever again face to face even though he said oh yeah we'll do something next year but that's next year and I've been thinking about that. I'm like, you know, not exactly spring chickens. Take care of your health. Now I'm starting to sound like Jeffree Star. Yeah, <laughs> you got to take care of yourself. It doesn't matter what the situation is. And um, I don't mind if I sound a little bit like Jeffree Star. He's actually really cool. He gives to women's charities. I like women's shelters. He really does. And I think that that's awesome. He came from nothing and made himself into something. There you go. Take your brush and pull it like this because you're making the other waves right behind it. This might be a little rough ocean today. you got these little waves right here like that and if you look at that that has a bunch of flow to it now and if I need to I can just go ahead and wet my brush this isn't a bunch of like chemicals like you would if you uh, were using oil paint oil paints you definitely have to use a chemical with painting so and then it has to cure forever. <laughs> Using oil paint, it doesn't. You don't cure it forever. It's just that it takes at least a week for an oil painting to cure, if not up to a month, depending on how many layers of that paint you put in the painting. Now, if you notice, I'm brushing back. And the reason I'm pulling it this way is I want you to have some spectrum of, you know, how you're seeing these pull together. Um, yeah, I, I really got, I've really got to uh, get my studio set up better this year. It's just cost. That's the problem. It's the cost. I don't have a lot of money. And, uh... People don't buy my artwork. Nope. People don't buy my artwork. I don't know why doing this since I was a kid. I've seen some of that college so-called artwork. Not to, you know, call out that <coughs> on uh, what they teach today. But what they teach today in those colleges for art is bullshit. Oh, did I say that out loud? Yes, I did. Um... And I don't really care. I'm going to call it. Um, I'm going to call it as I see it. I guess. Um, I've seen a lot of it. And it's, it's crap. It's 
like they want to call it art, but it's not really art. Um, then I'm going to take this right here and just kind of, and this is that purple tone. And I'm mixing it with the blue just a little bit. And this is going to be that foam right there on the wave. And you'll see in a moment how I blend this. Purple with the blue. Yeah, I don't know what kind of whatever they're teaching at these colleges nowadays, but take your tip of your brush, blend that. But whatever they're teaching at these colleges nowadays, it doesn't really look like art to me. And I'm still struggling to see this. The sun is right there. Like, why? And I want to make sure it's in camera view and not crooked, that's for sure. Um... We'll go ahead and just, I'm going to dry the brush the way I know. It's dry, trust me. And I did beat the devil out of it. <laughs> so you know. Just so you know. Okay, now we're going to take this up here. And we're just going to blend that in. It's wispy clouds. It's wispy cloud action. Be clouds coming along right here, and you know, don't be afraid to make clouds the clouds you want, the clouds that fit your life. Not everybody does the same cloud. All clouds are different, just like people. You may be different, but you're still a person. And that's what makes you, you. Wherever you may be around the world. And you see how like transferring, transforming, I should say, transforming this from just being a water paint, a water painting, to transforming it to being a mixed medium makes such a difference. And we're not done with this. I forget. I have that locked in. Um, makes such a difference. Doesn't that make such a difference than what you had previously seen with this painting? I'm going to try to balance you guys real quick. Now, when you hold a paint palette like this, you want to make sure that you're like this. And yes, that is the same exact way that Bob Ross held his palette with his missing finger. He's actually missing a digit. Part of his index finger is missing. Um, before he got drafted, to the uh, Air Force. He used to work in his dad's shop. I guess there was a little accident one day and it wasn't so it wasn't such a happy accident. It was just an accident that caused Bob Ross his finger. It did it cost him his finger? But it didn't cost him Uncle Sam from not bothering him. <laughs> as long as you still had a trigger finger on the other hand or something you were able to do. They were coming to draft you. Okay, I mixed a lighter blue. Which we're going to take up right here. 
because I accidentally mixed some blue into that yellow and got a smidge of green and yeah, that that can always be fixed, but switch my paint brushes here right quick. Wanna blend? Just take the tip of this, swirl it, and blend your cloud. Just blend it going up that brush make yourself some cloud in that sky right there right there just blend it I may be doing a Bob Ross ASMR by accident but I'll tell you what wipe a brush <laughs> And when you want to dry it, this is what you're actually wanting to do. As long as it's dry, because if it's a wet brush, ooh, paint goes over it. everything. That's why I have the towel to clean my brush, or dry my brush, and also help to keep it clean. And sometimes I have to put my paint palette down next to me. Um... And then I can think again, like, what do I really want to pick up? What do I want to blend? I'm going to pick up a little more of that pink. And I'm going to pick up some of that purple with it. Give it a lighter depth. And then we're able to just come right in here. And you'll just see how this is just all going to blend together. Your sky is as happy or as dim as you want to make it, depending on your mood. And I kind of just wanted to bring a bright, cheery sky to you. It's winter. Winter can be dull in some places of the world. And it can also be very bright and cheery in other parts of the world. And I'm really hoping that teaching you guys painting again. Oh my gosh, I was so excited. I'm like, you know what? Let me go over this painting with you guys today. And I decided yeah. Sorry, Teresa Romer, I shut you off just to do this video. I shut off Rich Lux earlier. And then I shut off Teresa Romer just to do this. Now, if you noticed, the pink and the yellow made a different kind of orange tone, which I really wanted in this. And I'm just going to work that along right in here. Just to continue to get that tone. And then we're going to blend it out here. Just to blend this color. Oh look, I accidentally had a happy accident. You'll see that in a minute. I know you can't really tell. I did, I really had a happy accident on the canvas right there. <coughs> Gave the... Um, Gave an illusion of a, a, the cloud, you know, being so, so different. Then you can bring that pink in a little bit if you want. Right here. And it gives that orangey effect. Um, not a lot of people could probably tell that. But like I said, you know, don't be afraid to mix your mediums. For years, <coughs> for years I had been told, like I said, that you can't mix water and acrylic. On a canvas. Now, truthfully, some of these tube paintings on here, the smaller ones here, 
Some of those are water paints. Some of those are literally water paint. And uh, I got to show you how you can literally blend it. And what I mean is, this will be an example right here. You just keep blending right here in the sky, right? And you're going to see how much of the darkness and the light changes in this part of the sky. See that? I don't know if you can. You will in a little while because I'm going to bring you guys back up here. So changes this. I mean, I can see it. And there's different styles of doing things to change the contrast in a painting. And just don't be afraid to explore what you can do with what you have. Um, that does make a difference explore with paint. Now I'm just taking a little bit of this pink and that yellow. It's the bright yellow. And that also makes an orange, in case you want to know. And just take that right in here. Got this beautiful tone right in here. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that. What, what just happened? Beautimus. Beautimusness in the sky because you're taking these tones and then you're taking them and you're going like this and you're learning textures you're learning you're learning a skill that's for sure take a little more of that yellow a little more of that pink pink and yellow makes a really bright tone orange and you can lay some of that right up in here I think that's what I might really want is some of this right up in here to like give that some extra contrast and see how that totally like changes your focus on your painting and how you want to do it for you how it fits your style and your mood of the day painting is a mood like you have to be in the mood to be able to paint and create um, I asked some tattoo artists one year at the tattoo convention in Philly, like, they fell in love with the, uh, baby tiger on my leg, right? And they asked me, oh, what shop did you get that from? And I told them, you know, I did it, and I did do it. And they're like, so what tattoo shop are you with? And I'm like, I'm not, I'm freelance. Um, and Chris Torres from New York Inc. was standing behind me and he was laughing at those guys because I asked them, you know, how long have you been an artist? And they're like, huh, what do you mean? And I'm like, how long have you been an artist? Like painting and drawing and they're like, um, and I'm like, oh, I see. Be very careful if you get a tattoo from anybody. Make sure that they're an artist first. Trust me, makes a huge difference in who is handling your ink. Huge difference. Now, I really don't know if you guys can tell the huge difference in that. Now, look at that. The huge difference. And how this looks now. Now, like I said, I put brown on here for another reason. And yes, I could blend my clouds a little bit, I suppose. And after I'm done with this video, I'm going to go check and see what my friend wanted.
And I don't want him to feel embarrassed thinking he may have interrupted me. Ah, uh, no, he didn't interrupt me. Uh, I'm just teaching. I'm just, excuse me, I'm just teaching you guys today. We have the beach. I told you guys that uh, we were going to make some rocks on the beach. And we are going to do that. I'll get this brush a little wet here. That helps. Helps if I remember that. And we're going to take all this right here in this little corner with some brown. If I have to take some other color just to make it light. I'm going to make it light on one side, dark on the other. There's a little tricky poo for that. Yeah, I might have to get some more of that out. And we're going to make some obvious rocks that this is splashing up on. It's also, you know what? I have the black. I have the black. What am I doing? That's what I have that black and blue for, right? And we're going to take this into part of the rock. And you have a rock right there. You have a rock right there. Oh my gosh, look at that. You have a rock. In fact, you can continue with this. And I'm going to put a little brown on one side. A little bit of that brown that we blended on one side. And then we have double. So as we take this, it's kind of like, surprise, surprise. <laughs> now you don't want to make them too big. This is a smaller painting, so I'm just showing you. You don't want to make that too big. Maybe you have a little rock over here. A little rock right here in the beach. A little guy right there. Maybe this is a little land because, you know, hey, we got a little land going on over here. This got a little bit of that darkness to it. Not too much. Not too much. Now I'm in my Bob Ross mood. That's right. Now I'm in my Bob Ross mood. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh, yeah, that is the music. And no, and then right over here on my desk, right, right there is my Bob Ross coffee mug. <laughs> like what? That's right. Char owns a Bob Ross coffee mug. Why? Because I, I really, I liked Bob Ross when I was a kid. And like, you don't know, you don't even know. Being a Shriners kid, you're in the hospital. You're like wanting to watch something cool. Bob Ross comes on. The other kids think you're weird because you want to watch this old dude paint absolutely not weird okay we're gonna take a little bit of that brown back over here now i will bring some greens in because this will need some green so we're gonna put some beachy things along here for the green don't think we're not gonna do that but i needed to add some rocks in there because you know hey the water's splashing on something right <sighs> Now, let me tell you, not all palm trees in Florida are straight like these ones, okay? They're not all straight like those. And, and since these are Florida palms, I can literally show you not all palm trees in Florida are straight. <gasps> you know why? That one had a hard life.
that one is old from all of the uh, weather that's hit it. And it kind of had a rough life. So it's just, you're like, oh, no, you went over the clouds, all the pretty clouds. Yeah, I know. And this is like the trunk of your tree here. I'm going off the tree that's in my, my picture. Okay, just so I can bring you like some realism with this. Realistically, um, I'm going to take the thinner brush and I'm going to go into that black. You're like, why? Because it's like this. Um, I believe I do. Nope, that's Sasha. Somewhere along here, I thought I had a full picture. Nope, that's, that's Rocco and Sasha in Florida. That's not his dog, that's his cousin's dog. Um, she's such a cutie. Anyway, if I remember right. And this is also a coconut palm tree. <laughs> It'll have a little friend here in a moment. Um, but these palm trees, as Bob Ross said, had And he wasn't joking. The man came from Florida. He was not joking about these palm trees and how the palms literally laid. He was not joking about that. And you just take your paintbrush and tap it along. Oh my gosh. What are you doing? You're getting a palm tree. That, that's how the palms grow in Florida. And we're not going to let too much dark in this one. We're going to let that light through the dark. Don't, don't lose all your light. You want to keep some of that. And you see, you'd be like, that's a flubu. That's not a flubu. I was going for my black and went for my blue. I guess I'll mix that right there. Maybe that'll be another happy accident. Huh? Yeah. That's right. We're coming out on this side of the tree. Look at these old weathered trees like this, and it's actually quite interesting how you can paint them. It really is quite interesting on how you can paint these palms and see how I'm letting the light come through that let the light come through the dark and then you just take your brush back and forth just somewhat like what you would do if you were making a pine tree or just like this and that's the same technique we would use for a pine tree for making the branch like I said this little tree it's not alone out here now I'll take a little bit of that brown on one side the black on the other it's got a little friend friend. Th this is Bob Ross the tree and his friend Clyde. Okay, that's his friend Clyde right there. Clyde is a little shorter than Bob. <laughs> I don't think he got as many vegetables. They are who they are. For Clyde here, he has a little, a little bit more on. On him, 
Bob over there. Bob is a little older than Clyde. Which means Clyde has a few other palm branches. Coming out on him than Bob does. Which means you just take this, you bring it down, and again, don't lose your light with your dark. And you know, we're actually almost done with this painting. And I am having so much fun teaching you guys today. I need to bring back, or at least I feel I need to bring this, my painting, teaching you guys how to paint back. Now, if you guys really and truly want me to start teaching you guys how to paint again until I can get my sewing machine fixed, you leave that in the comments below. Absolutely leave that in the comments below. Yes, I do know sure that you have it right because you know you want to make sure that a tree looks like it's actually supposed to but like I said leave some light coming through that dark and uh she see Clyde over here looks a little darker than Bob that's okay because you always fix that you bring a little bit of that here just bring it down just Bring it down, make that noise, that's important. Then right down here at the bottom, just make some little grassies. I didn't put any green on here, so make it kind of like silhouette of the beach coming along, you know? Silhouette of the beach. How, how do you think this looks? How do you like that so far? You like that? Let me know, and I'll do more paintings like this, if you actually like that. I don't know if you like that. You'll have to tell me if you like that. Um, if you know about those, uh, those things where you, like, draw the picture and send it in, and, you know, we've all thought that, that was hokum. I'm pretty sure we all have. Um, actually, no, it's not hokum. When I lived in Texas one year, like, I had been doing those drawing things since I was a kid. I never bothered to send them, to send them in because I didn't think I was good enough. But one year when I was in Texas, I literally submitted and they sent somebody to talk to me. And I showed him my paintings and my drawings, and he's like, why aren't you teaching? I'm like, that's because I don't have a degree in, in art to be teaching people. And uh, none of the schools will help me get that degree. And I'm like, and I suppose you're going to tell me the same thing, that I'm too advanced for your school sure enough sure enough he told me I was too advanced to to attend their schooling and I'm like and, and another one and another one I went through so much of that that finally when I did go to a college for uh, a course the teacher was like why are you even here I'm like it was out of a bet Somebody bet me that I couldn't pass the course and I passed it and the person was mad and it's not my fault. You ain't here to say nothing now, are you? <laughs> no, literally that and physically that that person is not here to talk. Not to sound mean about it, but that person was mean to me. And she used to tell her uh, church people that I was dead. I'm not dead. Heck no. 
I'm here teaching that we're going to take a little green and yellow that I mixed together. And we're going to take that along this grass. Like I said, you know, I'm going to take up an hour or so of your day and teach you guys how to paint. Let's teach you guys how to paint something. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Maybe it'll cheer you up. Maybe you needed some Bob Ross style in your day today, huh? Maybe you did. You don't know. Maybe you did. And I brought it to you. I'm actually glad I could bring this to you. I'll just take your, your brush and just tap that in there. Now I'm just going to pick up some of that yellow and uh, highlight in here a little bit highlight on that rock too, make it look like a little something has started to grow on that rock. So that's what I did right here, started to make it look like something's growing. You need something growing around the base of your tree. Say, hey, the tree's alive. And you can have like a little bit of the green and the yellow. take that along in here. You know you have little bits of beach grass. It changes as you go to the corner. Yeah, I kind of wanted to do that right there. That was not a mess up. I actually wanted that. And you see how that tone changes as you get there. You can pick up a little more of that green. That green's darker. And just go in. Like, wait, how'd you get this green? Yellow and blue make green. Yellow and blue make green. Picked up some yellow. I picked up some of that blue. Brought it over to one section and it made this beautiful green. <laughs> Guys, yeah. Yeah, sorry you even have to see where my teeth are missing. Um, and you can like bring this in here. Just touch on those trees. Slightly touch. Make it look like the sun kissed it a little bit as the sun's going down. You see how that totally changes the outlook of this tree. It may be a silhouette, but at the same time, there's a little bit of something where the sun was still able to leave a little sparkle in those trees. We can't leave Clyde out. We got Bob. We already painted Bob. We gotta give Clyde here a little attention. I like Bob Rice to say, you have paint on both sides of your brush. Make sure you use it. Don't waste your paint. Just lightly bring that and like and turn your brush when you go to put it on this and that way you're not going to flu boo in that part won't be such a happy accident that'll just be such an accident you will wish it didn't happen <laughs> so and i'm again going to bring you up here show you this like this was just a water painting with no trees with no trees and now it's this it's this and you know what this reminds me of is when i went to coco plum beach i got it right this time coco plum beach with rocco and um, so I guess it's kind of like a look between Coco Plum Beach and his cousin's backyard. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. I'm so excited to just bring this to you. Just mm, bring it. Just bring it. And um, I'm going to say this, this painting, I just want to bring a smidge more of that greenish yellow to like brighten a few little spots maybe along here 
And then we're almost done with this painting because I've taken up a lot of your time today. And thank you. I hope you were able to stick with me through this whole painting and enjoy. Enjoy this lovely painting um, that I brought to you today. And um, I'm not going to put any yellow into the water because I don't want to make that green. And there's specific reasons for that. But um, yeah, I, I think we can call this one done. Let me get a uh, script liner pen or pencil, uh, paint brush here. That's not a script liner. I do have one over here. I have a script liner. And I do not sign in red like Bob Ross. No. Anybody knows me from doing my artwork, they know I will take that script liner brush, do my last name first. my middle initial and then make sure if you can see my middle initial and then my first initial and uh, we're gonna call this done so from right here at Char's fascination I hope that you were fascinated. That's right, you're the fascination. We're fascinated in watching how I brought this painting together. And if you sat through the full hour and eight minutes, I do appreciate your time. Um, Maybe you needed something interesting to watch while you were having your dinner. I don't know this. Maybe you did. Um, <laughs> and uh, again, as always, stay happy, stay healthy, stay positive, and as always, stay blessed. And like I said, if you want to see me bring you more of this... Um, let me get this unhinged from here. If you want to have me bring you more artwork like this, if you want me to teach you how to make art like this, and uh, you leave that in the comments below. I do have some mountain paintings to redo I no longer have them, but uh, I am going to redo them, but yeah, I'm glad to be painting again. Um, every artist paints different and, um, and has a different, has a different technique. But, you know, when you look at a painting from afar, that's when it actually catches the eye. So I'm glad I could bring it to you. And I will see you guys later. So I hope you really have enjoyed watching this. And I don't have any Bob Ross outro music for this. You can just listen to that in your head. Da -da -da -da. Da 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 da